Hi, you're on the This Is Crime channel. I'm Matilda. Listen to my new story. The horrifying story of Joseph Fritzl, who raped his daughter for 24 years and hid her in a bunker. The case of Joseph Fritzl, Joseph Fritzl, made the world famous in 2008, when law enforcers learned that for 24 years, he forcibly kept his own daughter in the basement. All these years, Yosef brutally beat, insulted, and raped the girl. Perhaps she would have remained in her cage if it had not been for an accident. Yosef Fritzl was born April 9, 1935, in the small Austrian town of Amstetten. His father, Franz Fritzl, served in the army, and his mother, Rose Fritzl, most of the time led the household, as she could not work for health reasons. Therefore, the small family lived quite poorly, and when the father left his wife and child in 1939 and went in search of a better life, it became even harder for them. There were times when Yosef and his mother did not even have anything to eat. Then acquaintances and neighbors came to their aid. The man later described his father as an irresponsible loser who cheated on his mother all the time and called him a lowlife. According to Fritzl, Amstetten's Nazi past had a huge impact on him. In 1938, the entire town cheered Hitler, with swastika flags hanging on every house and the residents applauding when the Fuhrer merely drove by. The era of fascism I grew up in meant total control and respect for authority. I think I picked up some values from that life. Subconsciously, of course. In 1941, the Amstetten Railroad regularly transported troops to the Eastern Front. Not far from the home of Rosa and Josef Fritzlei were two concentration camps. Even in his early childhood, Josef understood what was happening there. He and his mother had to live through some difficult times. The departure of his father, poverty, the war, the difficult post-war period. But, as Yosef said, his mother was a strong woman. It was she who taught him discipline and restraint, made him appreciate hard work, and was harsh when it was necessary. Later, it turned out that at times, Rosa Fritzl was even too strict to her offspring. Acquaintances called her a real tyrant and said that the boy often went in bruises and all his rage spilled out on cats and dogs killing them at home. At the age of 16, the boy finished school and entered a technical school. There, he successfully mastered the profession of electrical engineer, and after graduation, he got a job at a local metallurgical company. Soon, he met a girl named Rosemary. Between the young people began a stormy romance. When they married, Joseph was 21 years old, and his wife, only 17. Their marriage was difficult to call happy. Joseph demanded that Rosemary fully corresponded to the standards of his strict mother and the submissive wife, although with difficulty, but tried to fulfill it. During their married life, Josef and Rosemary had two sons and five daughters. Fritzl always wanted a large family and, as it would later turn out, for the sake of this goal was ready to go to the most terrible deeds. In 1959, Joseph Fritzl first went to the police on charges of exhibitionism. A little later, the man raped two girls in the city of Linz, sneaking into their home late at night and threatening them with a knife. Only one victim complained to the police, so Joseph got away with 1.5 years in prison. At that time, he already had four children with Rosemary. When the man got out of prison, his spouse took him back. After the whole world learned about Fritzl's story in 2008, the police began to receive statements from other victims of the maniac. So, it turned out that during his life, he raped at least 40 different girls. But that's not what this is about. Let's find out why Fritzl was once sentenced to life imprisonment and nicknamed the devil in the flesh. In the 80s, Joseph seriously engaged in real estate and bought several plots in his hometown. The locals considered him a successful businessman, although in fact, for the sake of this business, the man had to get into large debts. At the same time, outwardly, he always looked solid. An expensive suit, car, 
rings on his fingers, shoes clean to a shine. After ten years, all records of his previous convictions lost the statute of limitations and were destroyed. So before the townspeople appeared quite a decent businessman and family man who had no problems with the law. But his wife and children knew very well what he was really like. Sister Rosemary Fritzel Christina said that the whole family lived in constant fear. He kept them in strictness, and for any disobedience he punished them severely. The children were not to make a sound while their father was in the room. If they broke the rule or forgot to say please and thank you, he began to beat them, teaching them to walk in line. Rosemary later said that at that time she was completely dependent on her husband, as she had no job and no education. Taking advantage of this, her husband abused his beloved in every possible way, publicly humiliated her, insulted her, beat her, forbade her to express her discontent, and for any disobedience, beat her again. I was so happy when he was not at home, but when he came back, I was terrified. That brute beat me and the children. He treated us like garbage. I hated that bastard. My marriage consisted entirely of beatings and scandals, says the woman. However, the woman could not even imagine what a monster her husband really was. When I saw Yosef slapping a child in the face and the children crying, I always felt sorry for Rosemary and her family. I did everything I could to convince her to leave, but she was hopeless. She told me that she wanted to leave Fritzel, but she couldn't run away with seven children in her arms. She realized that Fritzel would pursue them and bring them back. She only stayed his wife because of the children, says Rosemary's friend. And yet, in 1973, the woman managed to escape from her tyrant husband. True, the children had to leave with him. She moved out of the house and lived in a hotel owned by Yosef, where he conducted all the business. Sometimes, Yosef brought the children to her and left them for the weekend. But they still spent most of their time in what is now called the House of Horrors. All the Fritzel children tried to create their own family as early as possible, because it was their only chance to oppress their father. Only the mentally retarded Yosef Jr., who served as their errand boy, and the youngest daughter Elizabeth, the most beautiful of all the sisters, remained with their parents. Fritzel called Elizabeth his favorite daughter, but this did not mean that he treated her as befitted a loving father. On the contrary, he was jealous of all her classmates, scolded her for too bright makeup, provocative clothes, could punish her if she looked after some guy. Elizabeth's friends wondered, how could such a pretty and kind girl not have a lot of suitors? They said she was always scared, sitting quietly in the corner so that no one would notice her. After graduating from school, Elizabeth got a job at one of Daddy's hotels, and later even tried to run away, but Fritzel found her. About the escape of the girl soon learned the whole city, so she got the fame of a runaway and dysfunctional teenager, which later only went to Joseph's advantage. On the night of August 28, 1984, the girl's life changed forever. Her father woke her up and ordered her to go with him to the basement, where he sedated her with ether and handcuffed her to a post. For the first few weeks, he held his daughter in complete darkness. Elizabeth tried to call for help, to escape, but all was in vain. Yosef had converted his basement into a bunker back in 1978. To do so, he submitted an official petition to the city municipality and even received a loan from the state fund to start construction. The man explained his desire to build a bomb shelter right under his house by the fact that he feared for the lives of his wife and children. Since Umstetten was less than a hundred kilometers from the border separating east and west, no one was surprised by his request. Josef Fritzel only went down to the cellar to bring his daughter food and to rape her. After the girl tried to fight him back, he put her on a dog chain. That's how she spent about nine months. Now, Joseph had to come up with a plausible story about his daughter's disappearance. He himself wrote a report to the police that his girl was supposedly missing. 
and a few days later brought a letter from Elizabeth, in which she said that she left home and will not return, and asked her not to look for her. The letter was written in her hand, so no one was suspicious. In the future, threatening to kill her, Joseph forces Elizabeth to write several more messages to her mother. In them, she tells her that she has joined a cult and asks her not to worry. Day by day, since I had locked my daughter in the cellar, my situation was getting crazier and crazier. I often wanted to tell my friend everything, but I was afraid of being locked up, Josef Fritzl confessed. Fritzl assured that the first sexual relationship between him and his daughter took place already in the basement. The man said that he could no longer contain his desires. He strongly wanted children from Elizabeth and dreamed of having a second family in the bunker. And so Elizabeth became pregnant. All nine months the girl worried about what her child would be like. She gave birth by herself. Even Joseph was not around at that moment. However, shortly before that, as a caring future father, he provided her with a supply of hot water, towels, diapers, antiseptic, books for young mothers. In 1989, a baby girl named Kirsten was born. From birth, she suffered from seizures. Doctors would later diagnose her with epilepsy, but was otherwise a normal child. With her birth, Elizabeth said, life made some sense. Now she had to take care of Kirsten. Besides, after the birth, the beatings from her father had stopped a little, but it was too soon to rejoice. After the birth of his daughter, Fritzl's inflamed mind began to think of Elizabeth as a wife. He bought her erotic lingerie, arranged with her dates in the basement, and, of course, regularly had sex with her. A year later, the girl gave birth to another child, a boy, Stefan. In 1992, a daughter, Lisa, was born. Then the family became very cramped to live in one room. The area of the bunker was only 20 square meters. The father continued to rape Elizabeth right in front of their common children, as they simply had nowhere to go. But when the youngest girl started to get sick, Yosef came up with a way to solve the problem. Elizabeth and I planned the whole thing together, because we both realized that Lisa, with her poor health, had no chance of surviving in the basement. It wasn't hard to get Elizabeth to write a letter telling her that she couldn't raise the child, and so she was giving it up. She may not have wanted to give up her daughter, but if she loved her and wanted her to survive, she had no choice, says the maniac. In May 1993, Joseph threw nine-month-old Lisa under the door of his own house. In addition to the baby, the box contained a letter in which Elizabeth asks her parents to take care of their daughter. Rosemary was to receive two more such messages in the future. The woman could not even imagine that all this time Elizabeth was under their feet and that her father abused her. In just twenty-four years of her imprisonment in the bunker, Elizabeth bore Yosef seven children. Three were lucky enough to end up on top. Elizabeth's mother had already stopped being surprised when she saw a box with a foundling under the door. The other three, one child died shortly after birth, spent their entire lives in the bunker. The children did not receive proper treatment, education, were tormented by toothaches, were physically weak, stuttered, and were under constant stress. Even by combining their strength, they could not overcome the tyrant grandfather. Besides, he constantly suppressed them psychologically, humiliated, insulted, beat, and abused them. On the contrary, Yosef spoiled his grandchildren, who were allegedly planted by his daughter. The whole family they went on vacation. The children received books, toys, after graduation went to study at a prestigious college. He still remained strict, but no longer allowed himself such behavior as during the upbringing of older children perhaps due to age, perhaps due to fatigue. Living on two families and carefully hiding it was becoming more and more difficult every day. Nevertheless, Yosef managed to find time for entertainment. Covering up shopping trips and meetings with friends, the man went to a gay bar or brothel where he satisfied his sexual needs. 
His daughter Elizabeth had long ceased to attract him, because during the years spent in prison, she had turned into a flabby, toothless old woman. So Joseph ordered his best prostitute and had sex with her in the basement of the brothel for an extra fee. This gloomy place appealed to him very much. When he returned to his home basement, the man would show Elizabeth pictures of the children who lived upstairs and tell her about their successes. It could have gone on like this, but one day Kirsten's eldest daughter became very ill. Since he could not call a doctor, Yosef gave her a simple aspirin, and the girl vomited blood and fainted. Eventually, under Elizabeth's pressure, Yosef had to take Kirsten to the hospital, making up a story that the mother had left her daughter like that on his doorstep. Allegedly, she had done this before, but with small children. The accompanying note, of course, was attached. The doctors found the story rather suspicious. They saw the condition Kirsten was in and could not believe that a loving mother could bring her to such a state. The girl had a bloody tongue. Her body was pale with bruises and abrasions. Her teeth were rotten and had long since turned black, and she was incredibly thin. The police soon became interested in the situation. There were many inconsistencies in Yosef's story. Why did the mother leave the girl under the door and not take her to the hospital herself? Why was the girl in such a terrible condition? Had she never seen a doctor? In the meantime, Kirsten was dying. She was hooked up to a ventilator and put on dialysis. To track down her mother, the story of the abandoned girl was told on television. Elizabeth had a television in the bunker, so she saw that broadcast. The daughter begged her father to let her go free, to the hospital, promising that she would never give away their shared secret, and Yosef agreed. For the first two hours of interrogation, Elizabeth did stick to her version of the cult, but when the police convinced her that she was safe, she told them her whole story. The next day, Fritzl was forced to lead operatives to the basement, where they found the rest of Elizabeth's children. The boys were immediately taken to hospital, and their torturer was taken into custody. On March 9, 2009, 73-year-old Joseph Fritzl was sentenced to life imprisonment. He was found guilty on five articles, illegal imprisonment, negligent homicide, rape, slavery, and incest. The Austrian maniac is still alive. He is serving his sentence in a prison institution for the mentally ill, where he is known under the fictitious surname Mehrhoff. All of the perpetrator's victims have undergone long rehabilitation. Now Elizabeth and her children live in Austria under other names, in a place that is not disclosed to anyone. If you like this story, subscribe to the channel and put a thumbs up. Look forward to more stories from the team of our channel. This is Criminal.